Here we're going to look at electronic structure, in particular build on the theory that we have from Junior Cert where we're looking at shells of electrons surrounding an atom. To start with, we're going to look at group 1 and build up electronic structure using the old method and then bring, introduce a new method. So, if we start with lithium, we know that it's got three electrons, its atomic number is three, three protons and so three electrons. If I was to build up the electronic structure, I would say that the first two electrons go into the first shell and the last electron goes into its outer shell. So it's got an electron configuration there of 2, 1. If I then go down the group, I might have a look at sodium. I know that it's got two electrons on an inner shell followed by eight electrons in a second shell and then one on its outer shell with the electron configuration 2, 8, 1 there. And for potassium, I could draw it, but I know the electron configuration for potassium is 2881, as there's a total of 19 electrons, and the outer shell has one electron as it's in group one. So that's all theory we know and we're fairly used to. We're now gonna have a look at building on this and also looking at why fireworks give out certain colors when we see them around Halloween, okay? So we're now gonna introduce a new concept. And that new concept is what we'll call an energy level. So Previously, I'm just looking at sodium here and the electronic structure for sodium, which is here. So in another video, you're going to see how we can't predict the exact location and momentum of an electron at any one given point in time. What we can, however, know is that they occupy a fixed energy or an energy level. So the old thing that we called an, a shell, we're now going to actually just call an energy level like that. Now, in the first energy level, which is this blue line here, n is equal to one. Well, what is n? n is what we call the principal quantum number. It's just essentially the first shell. And we're gonna call it the first energy level, okay? It's the energy level which has the lowest energy, and so it's actually the one that's closest to the nucleus. And it's represented by this blue line when I just straight around the sodium. And we know that two electrons fill the first shell, or two electrons fill the first energy level. The second energy level is higher in energy, represented by this green line, and it houses a total of eight electrons. And the third energy level, n is equal to three, for sodium, just has one electron in it. And that is the one that's furthest from the nucleus and also has the highest energy. We're gonna expand on energy level a little bit in the next video, but for now, it's important to realize that these things are energy levels. Well, to understand the theory of energy levels and how we know they exist, we have to look at things called emission spectra. But before I look at emission spectra, I'm gonna look at something called the electromagnetic spectrum. Well, what's an electromagnetic spectrum? Well, it's a diagram that shows us all of the different types of radiation that we have. That's electromagnetic radiation, ranging from radio waves to microwaves to infrared, visible, UV light, X-ray, and gamma rays. Now, each of these radiations are defined by certain frequencies and wavelength and energy, which is here. And we're going to look at what each of those two terms mean. First of all, wavelength. Well, if I picture these things here as waves, the wavelength is actually the distance between the crest of two waves. The frequency is the number of waves that pass through a certain point per second. So down this end of the spectrum, we can see that there's quite a low frequency, and here there will be a high frequency, okay? Because a lot of these waves pass by a certain point per second. Here we have a much shorter wa wavelength. It turns out that a short wave wavelength or higher frequency gives a much higher energy, okay? So gamma rays have a higher energy than radio waves. Okay, why are we looking at that? Well, it's important to understand that the electromagnetic radiation we talk about has certain frequencies and certain wavelengths associated with it. The visible spectrum of light is what we're really concerned with because that's what a human eye can detect. Um, it detects radiation at that particular wavelength of frequency. What is the visible spectrum of light? Well, it turns out if we take any white light and pass it through a prism, we'll see a visible spectrum. So we'll see a continuous spectrum of colors from red to blue. Now those red and blue and green colors just have a certain associated frequency and energy associated with them. It's a bit like when you see white light coming through the sky and you see raindrops in the sky, 
and white light passes through the raindrops. The raindrops act as a prism and we see a rainbow because the continuous spectrum is produced as the white light passes through the raindrops. Now we're going to look at essentially what happens when we see a firework. Okay, So let's say a firework goes off in the sky and we're looking at different colors. Sometimes you might see a red color, sometimes you might see a green color, sometimes you might see a lilac color and so forth. Okay, But you essentially see a lot of color and then we're going to look at why we see those colors. To do that I'm going to look at the energy levels that I talked about up here and in particular look at hydrogen's energy levels. So this is quite generic. We have an energy level n equals to 1. Turns out hydrogen's electron occupies that. Then there's n equals 2, 3, 4 and it just keeps on going up. All right, These energy levels. Turns out the further from the nucleus the higher in energy they are and electrons can occupy these things called energy levels which we used to call electron shells. Now we look at what happens to an electron. So this in particular is hydrogen's emission spectrum, but we can think of any metal and what happens to it when we give it energy. When we give the elements like hydrogen energy, the electron jumps and it jumps up to higher energy levels. So now it's important to introduce a couple of definitions. Well, when an electron is in its lowest available energy level, it's called its ground state. Now, when you give that electron energy, and it moves up to a higher energy level, that's called an excited state. So we've got a ground state, which is low in energy, and an excited state, which is high in energy. So now let's imagine we take that little X there, that electron, on any element, let's say hydrogen, for example, and we give it energy. What happens? The electron jumps up to higher energy levels. But because that electron is not in its ground state, it's in an excited state, that electron has to fall back down to its ground state. As the electron falls back down, well, if it goes from one energy level to another energy level, which both have a fixed amount of energy, then it releases a certain amount of energy. And it turns out the energy it releases gets released as a photon of light. And it's released essentially as a certain color in some circumstances. Now, when it's released as color, those circumstances that I just told you about, that's called the Balmer series. So when the electron goes back down to n equal to 2, the energy that's released has the same frequency that's in the visible spectrum. So we're allowed to see it. So it turns out that the energy that's released, so let's say you go from an energy level E2 down to another energy level E1, that's equal to a certain constant called Planck's constant times the frequency of that energy. So when we look at the emission spectrum for hydrogen, we get a series of lines here, a seri series of colors. Each of these colors is a part of the visible spectrum. There, 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 and there. So each of these colors represents an electron falling from a higher energy level down to n equal to 2. Now there are loads of transitions that happen, but the only ones that we see are the ones that occur when the electron falls down to the n equal to 2 energy level. If we take a gas tube of hydrogen and let's say we apply high voltage to it, what you're going to see is a bright pink light. Now, if you pass that bright pink light through a prism, what you're going to see is individual colors obtained, not the whole visible spectrum. So, as I said, we wouldn't see the continuous spectrum. All we'd see are certain individual colors. The colors form because the electron has jumped from a certain level to another level. Now, that is a discrete amount of energy, which corresponds with a discrete frequency, i.e. a discrete color. If you take a different element, as you apply energy to that element's electrons, as it jumps from one energy level to another, those electrons will then fall back down to a lower energy level as they do they release a certain color the predominant color that they release is equivalent to the main electron transition that's happened essentially okay so i'm not going to go into the rydberg constant or anything like that it's not on the leaving cell chemistry course but we can essentially just relate a tra electron transition here i.e the fall from one energy level to another back down to the certain amount of energy that's released i.e. the certain colour that we see. So the last thing really to say is that when an electron falls back down to n equal to 1, that electron transition is usually picked up in the UV region, 
when a force n to n equal to two, that's picked up in the visible spectrum, and that's what we see. That's the atomic emission spectra. When it falls back down to n equal to three, well, that energy transition corresponds to the IR region, i.e., that certain frequency is found in the IR region of the electromagnetic spectrum over here. So just to recap, electronic structure, we know that they were arranged in shells. We've now called those energy levels. We know that the energy levels exist because of emission spectra, i.e. particular colors that we can see from different elements after those elements have been supplied with energy and their electrons have jumped from one energy level to another, i.e. to an excited state. As they fall back down, they release a certain amount of energy here which corresponds to a certain frequency of energy that we can usually see if it's an electron transition that falls back down to n equal to two. We can see it as a particular color. You might not see each color individually until you pass it through a prism. So that's just a recap of emission spectra and electronic structure.